Module 26 Soft Ground Etching Apparatus and Materials Zinc Copper Block Size 7 inches into 7 inches Scrapper or Metal File Brass Soap Sticker Paper Black Printing Ink Shop Out Solution Inking Knife Soft Ground Different Types of Textures Soft Materials as per your design, inking glass, paper for printing, cotton rags and kerosene for cleaning, printing machine, mask, roller, hot plate. Next this clean block is applied with hard ground and smoked on the side to be etched. The technique of soft ground etching was first invented in a one-off example in 1640s by Benedetto Castiglione and is got known as a unique example in history. The process got reinvented in the 18th century in France by J. C. Francois while he was developing crayon engraving. The admixture of tallow to the usual etching ground tenders, it's soft and waxy and prevents it from setting hard when it is applied in a thin layer to the copper plate. The artist draws in pencil or crayon onto paper laid over the soft ground. The pressure lifts the ground and leaves the copper partially exposed for biting in a bath of acid in the usual manner, that is as in hard ground etching. Soft ground traditionally is used to replicate the quality of a soft pencil line to receive a textural transfer from various materials or to accept the impression of various types of plant matter or animal skins. A soft ground even when dry remains soft and sensitive to pressure. Soft ground is a mixture of one part petroleum jelly to approximately three parts liquid hard ground and is applied with a medium soft rubber brayer that is used for nothing else. A brayer that has been used for inking or hard ground will contaminate the soft ground. The brayer is packed after use and returns it to the appropriate hook. Because a soft ground remains sensitive to the touch after it is dry, the plate must be handled with care. Next, this block is smoked, slightly warm it. Since slight scratches, fingerprints or brushes will edged, one must use a brush to keep from touching the surface of the plate. And when storing the plate before removing the ground, one must not allow anything to touch the grounded surface. The longer one leaves the soft surface sit after being applied, the less sensitive it becomes. For maximum receptivity to textures or drawing, one should work on the plate immediately after the ground has dried, but allowing some time for the ground to set up before placing the plate in the moderate. The above chosen textured materials are arranged on the plate and kept wet using gelatin paper. Soft ground etching was invented as Part of the crayon engraving process as a means of making facsimiles of drawing. In 18th century France, it remained an adjunct of crayon engraving, but in England, which had no tradition in crayon engraving, artists saw the advantage of its immediacy to make original multiple drawings by its means. Gainsborough was an early exponent. In the 19th century, the Norwich school artists Chrome and Cotman and the watercolorist David Cox and Sam Prout took it up. And for the first couple of decades, it became a popular medium. It was largely suppressed by lithography by 1830. This plate is immediately passed under the machine. The ground is replaced on the soft material. At the end of the 19th century, Frank Short revived an interest in ground soft etching. Though it did not attract many artists, a similar revival of interest on mainland Europe had a more widespread of impact. The edges of the plate are bevel. 
The back of the plate is scuffed with 200 or 400 grit wet, dry sandpaper use wet and the black of the place in spray painted with ancient enamel paint or self stick shelf paper is applied to the back of the plate. Remove the texture material are arranged on the plate. The plate is polished unless you wish scratches and random plate tone. The plate is decreased so it will readily accept the crown. New sprint is tapped to a hot plate and the copper place is placed on the newsprint and the thermostat is turned to 350 degree or 375 degree align the hot plate and copper plate to get very warm a small amount of soft ground is dubbed onto the plate using a mat card to avoid scratching the plate and the ground is allowed to melt do not burn the soft ground if it starts to smoke turn the thermostat down burning soft ground onto a plate will reduce its ability to transfer an image or texture cleanly. While the ground and plate are warm, take the brayer reserved for soft ground and roll the ground evenly over the plate. If the brayer slides do not apply as much pressure. Once the ground has been applied evenly, turn the thermostat off, untape the newsprint and use the newsprint to help slide the plate off the hot plate. Set the plate down on a cool surface and continue to roll the surface to of the plate until it looks matte. Touch up the unwanted portions with acid resistant solution, strop out solution. Let the plate cool completely before drawing on the plate or attempting to transfer a texture to the plate. If the plate is shiny, repeat the process with a warm re-roll followed by a cool re-roll. There are some methods of transferring images onto soft ground. The hand method relies upon the pressing of textures onto the ground using the pressure of the hand or a clean brayer. The pencil pan method employs the technique of initially marking out the outline of the plate onto a tracing paper before applying soft ground. This marked tracing paper is laid over the plate and taped to the table. A bridge is used to avoid brushing the ground. An image is drawn onto the tracing paper or traced over an existing image, varying the pressure to alter the lightness or darkness of the line. After drawing, the tape is removed and the tracing paper is lifted off the plate. In the press transfer method, the grounded plate is placed on the bed of the press. The textured material are arranged the grounded plate. The plate and material is covered with matte broad that is larger than the plate. The matte board is covered with clean newsprint and press blankets are laid on top of the newsprint. Taking care not to disturb the plate, material or the matte board and newsprint. Very little pressure used for printing when the process bed is rolled through. The layers of blankets, newsprints, mat board and materials are carefully peeled off. Areas where no etching is to be done are stopped out using stop out solution. The back side of the block to be etched is first covered with an acid resistant coat either of black japan or a plastic sticker. During the etching process the plate has to be backed up carefully with shelf paper using rosin based varnish or scuffing and painting with engine paint. After backing the plate, it may be necessary to chop out the front again. The etching is done with nitric acid and would remove more time than a line etch. Timing for a soft ground is generally no more than 45 minutes before the ground gives up. Crater like biting etch might happen beyond 45 minutes, so it needs careful watching. Mineral spirits are used as solvents for soft grounds. A rosin based alcohol stop out varnish work best on soft ground. It doesn't break the ground. Now, gently and carefully place the block in the acid solution in the plastic tray. 
for a normal soft texture the general timing for dip in the etchant is 20 minutes once the soft ground has been cleaned off the plate alcohol is used to clean the strop out varnish of the plate a sawdust box is used for removing grounds and strop outs this will allow the use of much less solvent only a small amount of solvent goes a very long way in the sawdust box and will make cleanup much easier and much less messy there is a possibility of air bubbles forming during the etching process hence it is imperative one removes them using a feather or other such implement at the time the block is being etched decreasing the plate is an important aspect of ground of soft ground technique or any of the techniques a pinch of whiting or French chalks is used with a little alcohol. Using two fingers, the plates are rubbed with this mixture, covering the entire surface. Rinse the whiting of the plate carefully using water. Let the plate dry completely. Once the plate is dry, do not touch the surface with anything except the ground which is to be applied. See you filler. Artist and printmaker Sue Fuller was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, America in 1914. She is most well known for her string compositions and soft ground etching. After the block is etched for 20 minutes, remove it carefully and clean the surface using kerosene, benzene or spirit. Fuller stayed at Carnage Institute of Technology Pittsburgh and at Teachers College, Columbia University, New York. She worked with Hans Hoffman as well as with Stanley William Hattier at his studio at Hiller 70. Under Hattier's ages, she began experimenting with printmaking and intaglio techniques that made use of textiles to create pattern and texture. Arching is a specific intaglio process that uses acid to incise the plate. Fuller's work is most readily associated with the New York modernist, constructivist and abstract expressionist artist with whom she worked closely. Fuller has had solo exhibitions at venues across the US and other countries, including the Corcoran Gallery of Art, Washington DC. 1951, the Smithsonian Institution, 1947, the Nishimachi School, Tokyo, 1954, and the Marion Kugler Macne Art Institute, San Antonio, Texas, 1956. Her works reside in the collections of the Museum of Modern Art, the Guhanmin Museum, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art and the Tate Gallery. This work illustrates Fuller's fascination with and study of geometry. It is highly graphic and employs sharp diagonals, spiraling arabics and an all-over woven or grid pattern. The trappings of the urban landscape, namely the remaining representational elements are overcome by roaring matrix. The paper to be used to print is kept soaked and blotted half an hour before the print is taken and should be damped when being printed for intaglio process. The result is both surreal and puristic. The work Fabulous City was included in the Metropolitan Museum of Arts exhibition entitled Drawings and Prints, Selections from the Permanent Collection, 2002. To 2003. While working at Atelier 17, Fuller became a master printer. She also developed intaglio techniques of her own and studied glass blowing in 1951, calligraphy in 1953, and lace making in 1962. Fuller taught at the Museum of Modern Arts Children's Classes, the University of Minnesota. Columbia University Teachers College and Pratt Institute. She wrote on the color prints of Mary Cassette for the Magazine of Art in 1950 and the article 20th Century Cat's Cradle 
about string and knot patterns for Craft Horizons in April of 1954. Further, she was extremely knowledgeable about the work of constructivist Nam Gabo and Antoine Pastner. The recipient of a Tiffany Fellowship in 1948, a Gavin Hem Fellowship in 1949, a National Institute of Arts and Letters grant in 1950, and the Carnegie Mellon University Alumni Award of Merit in 1974. Fuller was awarded the Women's Caucus of Art Honor in 1986. It should be noted that the antagonal process fills up ink in the block crevices and the upper relief surface area should be wiped clean and over the edges too. Whether a draughtsman, printmaker and master printer, sculptor, teacher or author, the career of Sue Feller was marked by continuing innovation and growth. Recently her work was featured in See Through Islip Art Museum East Islip NY November 25 2009 through January 24 2001 and the Pull of Experiment Postwar American Printmaking Yale University Art Gallery New Haven Connecticut September 25 2009 through January 3 2010 Between 1943 and 1945 she worked as a studio assistant to Stanley William Hayter at Atelier 17 incorporating both abstract and representational elements her soft ground etchings made inventive use of varied material for a popular prize winner in 1945 she formed her whimsical chicken by impressing a lace collar into the etching ground before adding engraved details for the non representational sailor's dream 1944 fabric ribbon and string produce a vigorous composition of lines and textural shapes during the 1950s she gradually gave up print making to concentrate entirely on the web like string creations she had been making for some time under the influence of constructivism a final registration is made on the machine she also studied glass making in england and italy and calligraphy in japan as well as lace making in 1969 she patented her method of embedding string in plus giving permanence of her complex sculpture inventions she eventually settled permanently in southampton near the eastern end of long island so fuller passed away in 2006 take the final print on the ready damp paper health and safety precautions one Chlor concentrated nitric acid and potassium chloride separately from other chemicals whenever possible use diluted acid acid etching should be done with local exhaust ventilation second an important safety rule when diluting concentrated acids is to add the acid to the water never the reverse third Wear appropriate gloves, goggles and protective aprons or lab coats when handling acids. If acid is spilled on your skin, wash with lots of water. In case of eye contact, rinse the eyes with water for at least 15 to 20 minutes and seek medical attention. 4. Cover acid baths when not in use. Fifth, nitric acid etching releases the aspirated irritant nitrogen dioxide, which has poor odor warning properties. During the etching processes, flammable hydrogen gas is also produced. Concentrated nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent and can react with many other chemicals, especially solvents or other organic compounds, to cause a fire. Sixth, concentrated acids are corrosive to skin. eyes respiratory system and gastrointestinal system 
dilute acids can cause skin irritation on repeated or prolonged contact. Concentrated nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent and can react explosively with other concentrated acids, solvents, etc. Nitric acid gives off various nitrogen oxide gases including nitrogen dioxide which is a strong lung irritant and can cause emphysema.